Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, I appreciate you coming to my channel. If you wouldn't mind, it helps me out a lot if you'd hit the like button before you leave. Uh, you know, make sure you like the stuff, but hit the like button, that helps a lot. Uh, thank you for that in advance. Um, today, uh, I'm going to do a bracelet, uh, kind of a cuff bracelet, and it's going to feature some cycles of the moon. Uh, I'm going to use a moonstone for a central stone, and then I'm going to mix in a little copper with the silver to show kind of the different uh, moon phases and uh, we'll see how it goes. I've never made anything quite like this so it should be fun. Uh, before we get started I'd like to thank my subscribers on YouTube. We've reached 5300 subscribers which is awesome. Thank you guys. Keep sharing my channel with people you know if you think they might be interested. Um, but thanks, I appreciate your support, both uh, the nice comments that you leave, as well as the financial contributions that you've made. So, I wanted to thank my uh, patrons over on Patreon. Uh, it continues to grow, and I have such a nice group of people over there. I really uh, enjoy our, our uh, interactions, and uh, I've just met a really a lot of nice people over there. So, thanks you guys, I appreciate your uh, support as well. Uh, let's get started on this project. So I'm uh, filming from the other side, so I'll have to try and remember to the camera's over here now instead of over where I used to put it. I'm trying this out to see how the view, if the view's a little bit better, because I think my right hand has a tendency to block things more than my left hand, so we'll see. Um, this is my design idea book. It's available on the merch store. I have found them to be super handy lately when I've started to get more complex designs and things and as you'll see today is kind of a complex design <laughs> this is actually two different looks so this one had fewer pieces in the side it doesn't include this crescent at the end so I'm gonna go with this side of the bracelet but it'll be duplicated on that side um, said I have a little moonstone here it's gonna go in the middle and then I'm gonna put a layer of silver on top of a layer of copper I've already actually punched these out with my disc cutter and uh, for this this is probably about 18 gauge copper and I use some 26 gauge silver for this piece it doesn't have to be very thick on that one and then I'll mount the bezel on top of that so it'll actually be kind of like that okay. and then I'll put some rays coming off the top and maybe some other ones I haven't decided yet um, this one's going to be silver over here and I'll put some silver rays coming off of there. Then we have a partial silver, partial copper one. It'll be like that, and there'll be a few rays coming off. And then I've got just these little crescents for the end. So, I've never seen a disc cutter before. Disc cutters are just uh, metal blocks with a, a slot in between, uh, multiple different holes of different sizes, and they come with pins that have a real sharp edge like that. And you put the piece of metal in between those and you hit it really hard with a hammer and it knocks a perfect circle out of there. Um, with 18 gauge, which I used for uh, the silver and the copper mostly, except for this one, uh, it you gotta whack it pretty hard to get it to come out of there. So, see, I'm still looking at, <laughs> I'm still showing it to that camera over there. It's over here. So, you, you slide the metal into this slot here, stick this pin in there, and hit it really hard with a hammer. So, and then uh, you can kind of figure out how I did this. I just took uh, a pre a pre cut disc that I'd done already and slid it part way through one of the disc holes and hit it again so it knocked out a portion. And that makes it easy to make little crescents then. So you just got to make sure you do it in the same size of the piece that you're going to put in there. All right. For the outside here, I'm going to use eight, uh, eight gauge half round wire and I'll probably put a little bit of sheet on the end just to give it some reinforcement underneath the bottom. Uh, this circle here is going to be 14 gauge uh, sterling silver. I'm kind of going to play it by ear from there. <laughs> Let's start by making a bezel for this moonstone. And I don't even need a bottom on it. Uh, if you've never been to my channel before, I use hard silver sheet solder for pretty much everything. I use a spray-on flux called Mighty Flux. 
And uh, for this stone, I'm going to use a 3 16 inch fine silver bezel strip, and it's 26 gauge, so it's a little bit on the thicker side, which I like for, for bezel. We'll file this flat. Mark these, I usually leave a, just a little bit extra beyond what I need. I have some room to file. Bezels are quick. I should say bezels are quick for me now. When I first started, bezels were a pain in the butt. I wasn't super excited to do bezels back then. Bezels get easier the more you do them. I usually tell people to make at least 30 bezels before they give up <laughs> because bezels can be frustrating at the beginning. By the time you do about 30 of them, they start to become pretty routine, I think. Yeah, it's pretty good on size. It's a little on the big side, but not so much that we have to worry about it. So I think. Uh, Let's, uh, I think let's solder some of the components together here in advance so that we can have them ready to go. We'll start to make the bracelet band and everything. I'm going to clean off the surface oxides on this piece of copper so that it solders down a little more easily. So I'll be right back. So I kind of just used a, a little uh, fine polishing wheel to get rid of some of that oxide that was on there. I'm going to flux both of these and I'm going to pre-melt some solder on the back of the piece of silver if I just start. Let's get that all nice and fluxy. Right. We'll be getting this to stay centered on here, I think. Sometimes when the, you're trying to solder one piece of metal on top of another, once the solder flows, it'll start skating around a little bit on you. So that's why I have the player or the tweezers here in case I need to move it back into place a little bit. I don't want it to be too far off center. Yeah. 
All right, so I was thinking these two where I'm soldering them. Actually, not those two. The ones where I have a copper one sticking out next to the that. But maybe I could uh, slide them both down on a piece of 26 gauge so that they have a nice support system underneath them. Just cut a little kind of rectangle to go around this. sure everything's nice and flat. I think this time I'm going to sweat it onto the little sheet first. Sweat soldering is when you're pre-melting some solder into a place you want it to be so that you can position some pieces on it or near it, touching it in some way, so that you can just Heat them up once they're in place and reflow the solder so it sticks the additional piece down. First I'll get the silver part soldered to the bottom sheet. Make sure we get a good seam going on there. And on this one as well. Those seem like they stuck down pretty good. So we'll find out. Those look like they'll be alright. Seem to be soldered down. I don't see any missing spots. Uh, last part that I'm going to do right this second here is let's add the bezel to this. Try and get it centered on here.
Okay, so in advance I cut uh, two pieces of uh, eight gauge half round and kind of flatten them out a little bit. I'll work on them a little bit more and then we'll find the center point. All right, let's find the center point. I'm gonna line these up the way they're gonna be. <clears throat> I measured this to be about six and a half inches long for this one. I usually just bend this on the edge of the table slightly. So I'm bending it sideways. I still need to make that circle that goes around here. That's much wider on this one. Hmm. And proportionally. Okay, let's make that circle next, and then I'll that'll help me to gauge how wide to make this, and then I can make things based off of that. So to figure out the circle, I can do the diameter of it. Take the diameter. Oh, 32, 32 millimeters. So if you do pi times diameter, we get our circumference length. So 8, 2, 36, 100.48 um, millimeters. So let's just call it 100 and a half. Those ends are lined up nicely. Let's get that soldered. what I'm going to do. I'm going to do at least four rays, maybe eight, I don't know, but I need to decide what to make these out of here. So I think I'm just going to use some 18 gauge. Um, actually, I know what I'm going to use. I'm going to take some 12 gauge square wire and I'm going to roll it through the rolling mill to flatten it out. Uh, that creates a good size. Uh, that I can taper, I think. So we'll, we'll try that and see how that works. It's that piece of 12 gauge square that I rolled through the rolling mill so it's flat, flattish. About an 18 gauge thick maybe. I cut some pieces here that are a little bit longer than I need to suspend this guy in here. So I'm going to file the ends flat on one side. Let's just try and solder these on you know, as centered as I can. Let's see if I can't get this to solder on without a lot of uh, silver 
or solder flowing onto the surface of the copper, hopefully. But if, if it does, we can always use the Dremel to get rid of it, probably. There's a lot more mass in the centerpiece here, so I'm going to have to spend most of the time heating that. What I want to do is I want to try and solder it to the side, right where those two come together. That's pretty close, I think. Now I have to eyeball the center pretty well. <laughs> That's pretty good. Okay, so I think I'm going to solder this in here, and then um, these guys are partially in here, so I'm going to have to cut out a little bit on each side so I get those kind of in line, and then we'll uh, keep on working our way down and see, what, see how it goes. So I already have some solder there, so we're good to go. to get an accurate uh, marks to where to remove them. Let me make sure I have something to contrast against what I, my scratches I'm going to make. So I oftentimes will use a sharpie to color it. like a steering wheel. get these filed up and then we'll solder them in. Okay, get them filed, I think. Let's see how they fit now. I think I'm going to do this one first and then I'll come back and do this one.
figure out how steep of an angle I need to make for these. That's actually pretty good, I think. I think that'll work. Just kind of eyeballing how big of a crack I want and where I should bend it. So if I decide to bend it right there, I use that to guide all of these distance wise so I can measure the same distance from this end. That'll get us pretty close. I'm just going to bend these back the opposite direction now. So I usually use the flat nose pliers. I grab them with the edge right on the spot I'm going to bend. I almost always over bend these because it's half the distance of this because these two add together. So I have a tendency to bend them a little bit too far. One of the other things I do on bracelets is I, I typically put a little bit of sheet underneath the ends here to reinforce it. So I'm going to cut myself a couple of pieces of sheet about here along that wide. Getting something as big as this, you need to get the whole thing hot, and it takes quite a while because there's a lot of mass in this. Probably not perfect, but I think it's probably good enough. I'm going to start adding rays. I was just thinking also, I might want to solder those little crescents in right now because those should be relatively easy to do, and the other things are going to be kind of piecemeal. So,
Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little filing and dremeling off camera to try and get those tapered down and figure out where to put those other ones. So I'll be right back. All right, hopefully you can see this. I've done uh, a few things off camera. I filed these down a little bit so they're kind of more uh, pointy, like uh, rays from the sun. And I added some rays on this little guy and cut this off to the length that I wanted so that this would lay in there nicely. And I did the same thing on this one here. Right. So I should be able to solder those in and then we'll see what else we need to do. I'm not sure if I'm going to add any more, but I think maybe some little rays in between, but we'll see. I'm going to file these to points, and then I'll cut them off to the length I want, and I'll add them on here. I may add... Uh, I got one here and one here, if I can squeeze one in there, one here and one here, and then one here, 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 and here. So, let me get those all filed down. Yeah, I've been making lots of little pointy things out of the rest of that uh, flattened 12 gauge square that I did earlier, and I'm going to add these where I want them. I want some extra rays. You can see it right here, 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 and here. And then I'll add one of these last four in the middle of each of these, I think. pretty messy right now but I think once we clean it up it should be pretty cool so I think I'm done soldering on components and I just need to let it pickle so I'm gonna have to bend it a little bit to get it inside of my pickle jar since I use an actual pickle jar so let's heat it up and let it pickle So I got everything kind of cleaned up, and I think it came out relatively pretty. I like it. Um, I filed the bezel down just a little bit to get it to the right height for the stone, and I'm going to hold it down. I do this differently than some people. Uh, I just use the flat side of the needle nose pliers here. And I'm just going to push that straight in. And once it's uh, tied up against there, then I can start kind of rolling it over the top. And once I think that's relatively snug in there, then I'm going to do the burnishing stage, which is where you rub the top edge with that rounded part here. It's right where the two come together. Right. Once you got it pretty smooth, I think we're good. Last thing I'm going to do is do some shaping. Um, the hardest part to bend is going to be right where this is a little bit thicker there, and so I'll probably uh, manually hold it like this against the bracelet mandrel and use the kind of get a curve.
curve started there. A lot of it I can probably do by hand. So the thing that I'm talking about as far as dealing with is these little points that I have loose. I have to make sure that those are pounded down. So nobody, nobody gets stabbed. <laughs> you don't want your jewelry to be implicated in a salt. So I'll get some better pictures of it and get it all shined up with a polishing cloth and I think we're done. So. All right, well that was the moon phase bracelet. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it took me a while but I got through it and uh, I wanted to thank you for coming and uh, I hope that you liked the video enough to really consider hitting the like button. If you do that'd be great. Uh, check out a few of my other videos. I have lots of great content here. I'm getting close to 210 videos. Um, so check some of those out and then subscribe to my channel. I'd love to have you. Uh, if you'd like to delve further, uh, check out the video description. There's a bunch of links down there. Uh, my Patreon, which features multiple tiers and a lot of nice people over there who uh, share a lot of knowledge with each other. Uh, there's also even a low-level Patreon uh, tier if you just want to get rid of the ads, so you're welcome to join that if you'd like. Uh, my merch store is a link in the description, and my website, and uh, there's even a Buy Me a Coffee link if you just want to give me a tip for my services here. <laughs> so, thank you very much. Uh, take care, and happy silversmithing.